Do you want to learn how to incorporate God in your fitness? Friends, stay tuned. I've got seven ways that are going to help you learn how to start incorporating God into your fitness today. friend, do you want to learn how to incorporate God in your fitness and what Christian fitness even is? Today, I'm going to unpack seven ways to start doing that today, okay? Many of us are exhausted doing fitness the world's way, and we don't even realize that we've been trying to answer our spiritual problems and issues with worldly solutions, and that's why it's not working. This will work, okay? And as we try to get fit, with God, we're going to notice a big difference because we're going to have peace in the process. And we are going to have power that is beyond our ability because the God, God we serve gives us the ability to walk in self-control. And so many of us aren't doing that. We're going to church on Sunday and then we're struggling and doing this whole fitness thing throughout the week without Jesus. Let's not do that anymore. Okay. Maybe it never occurred to you that opening your Bible before you head to the gym for your fitness was the answer or before you went grocery shopping or before you went clothes shopping or whether maybe you're trying to cook for your family in a healthy way. Maybe you want to be that mama role model that gets her whole family healthy. Well, going to God and letting him strengthen you with his word and equip you is a lasting answer. Okay. So today we are recapping week two of the 21 day fitness Bible study challenge. Now, if you're not taking that challenge, it doesn't matter because you can just start right here. But if you would like to download the full guide with all the scriptures and the prayers and action steps, you can do that now at kimdolanletto.com. And that would be 21 day challenge. So just Google Kim, Kim forward slash 21 day challenge, and you will find the 21 day fitness Bible study challenge, download your guide. And you, all of this will make much more sense, but you don't have to do that. If you want to learn these seven steps, let's dive in. Okay. Number one, pray for God to help you drink more water. This is crazy. I didn't know this when I wrote my book, fit God's way. I learned that water was mentioned 722 times in the Bible. Water is our gift from God. Our bodies are 60, 70 to 70% uh, water. So it is vital that we're drinking water. I mean, so many of us right now, miss, we misread cues from our bodies. We actually think we're hungry when we're thirsty. We get headaches and we lack energy because we're thirsty. Okay. Our bodies are dehydrated. So right now today, please begin to drink more water. Sometimes it's as easy as getting, like I have my little strong, confident, his cup here. Maybe it's a cute cup you need or something that has like the lines on it that tell you how much water you've drank. Maybe that, that fuels you and motivates you to have that kind of thing where you know how much water you're drinking and that will help keep you consistent. I do want to make a uh, one quick note that if you are working out you want to add seven to 10 ounces for every 10 to 20 minutes of exercise. And just a quick rule of thumb, if you're trying to determine how much water should I drink, divide your weight in half and drink a minimum of that many ounces of water a day. Okay. Here are our two scriptures. First Corinthians 10 31 says, therefore, whatever you eat or drink, whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. Amen. This is in everything. All right. God wants to come in and do every piece of life with you invite him in. Okay. And I love third John one, two, it says, beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. So let's walk out this health journey with Jesus and let's drink more water. Amen. Okay. Number nine. Now I'm going because last week, if you want to watch the first week recap, I went through one through seven, just look for the video or the podcast, wherever you're listening. Okay. And while I'm talking about that, if you're listening on Apple or Spotify, make sure you subscribe and rate and review the podcast. Never miss an episode sisters and your support, your ratings and reviews. They help more than, you know, please do that. Please help support this ministry by helping other people find it. And that's exactly what your rating and review do. Okay. Also, if you're watching on YouTube, give me a thumbs up for these videos and please subscribe. It goes such a far way. And I've just jumped back into YouTube to start building my YouTube channel. So I appreciate you. Okay. 
Number nine, pray for God to be your strength and support when you work out. So many women struggle with motivation to work out time. You know, the last thing we do is put ourselves on our to-do list, but our workouts need to be something that we pencil in on our calendars as like a doctor's appointment. Okay. So one thing I teach you in fit God's way is how to create that system in your life. How can I actually get the workouts in that I want to do? Maybe you need to just start doing it twice a week, pick a place where you're going to work out in a time and stick to it. And then, you know, if that works for a week or two, add another day in, maybe you need, you can get up and walk, do a YouTube video, uh, do something like that. I have workouts that are on pure flicks, great American pure flicks, hop on over there and try my, my workouts for free. They have a seven day trial. Okay. All right. So walking into a gym or a workout studio, it, I know it can bring up feelings of insecurity and not good enoughness. Like I hear all the time people say, I need to start working out before I go back to the gym and girls, we need to just rock our confidence and throw that out the window and show up for ourselves and our families in life. We are not what we look like. We are so much more. So let's prepare our hearts before we work out by placing our identity in Christ and drawing our strength from him. Okay. Hebrews 10 35 from the new King James version tells us, therefore do not cast away your confidence for it has great reward. Okay. And I just want to ask you right now, if this is a blessing to you and you feel like someone needs to hear it, make sure you share it because so many women don't know this. They are literally white knuckling their health and their fitness and their body confidence and image and all of that in their own strength. And we need Jesus here more than anything. Okay. All right. James 4.10 also tells us to humble yourself before the Lord and he will exalt you. When we are like, I I'm just going to say right now, like when I was first in the fitness industry, I was, I was not putting God first in my fitness and fitness can easily become an idol. So let's be very careful to walk humbly before our Lord and he will exalt us in him, through him and for him, we can accomplish much more than we could ever do in our own strength and for our own glory. Amen. Okay. Psalm 138, three tells us in the day when I cried out to you, you answered me and made me bold with strength in my soul. Girl, write that down. Like that scripture is written across my heart. That's why I don't need, like, I don't need my notes. I know it because I have cried out to God on my knees for strength and he will help you friend. Okay. There's a quote that I want to share with you because so often we as Christians get very confused about this whole fitness thing. I mean, I can't even tell you some of the comments people leave me. They're like, you need to be sharing Jesus, not fitness. Fitness has nothing to do with Jesus. And I'm like, God wants to like Matthew 6, 33 says, seek first the kingdom of God and his, and his righteousness and everything will be added to you. We seek God in everything everything. Like right now, if you're praying for a husband, be praying to, or if you want a husband, be praying to God for that husband. If your kids are struggling, be praying to God, like seek God first in everything, parenting, marriages, finances, workouts, food, all of it. He is, he wants to do life with you. He loves you so much. Okay. So here's the quote. We cannot give our hearts to God and keep our bodies to ourselves. There's a lot of confusion in the church. And I think quite clear and plain. It's because a lot of us don't want to be convicted about gluttony, about laziness, about, uh, things that Christians just think aren't sins. Like they act like there's a hierarchy of sin, but God tells us that sin is sin. And once we know something to be sin for us, it's sin. So let's go do the work with God because he has work for us to do, and we cannot do it in poor health. Okay. All right. Number 10, pray for your workouts to become a time of worship, man. If you are struggling with body confidence, if you're struggling with injuries, if you're struggling with, you know, if you just had a baby and you're trying to get your body back or aging, or you've gone through hormonal issues, you know, take a scripture with you meditate on it, pray over it, download one of my, or go to Spotify and look up my, I have a whole ton of, of Christian workout playlists and worship playlists that I've curated for you, because I know how it feels to be on this journey and just need Jesus in it because you cannot do it alone. So when we make uh, our workouts, a time of worship, we are just telling God how thankful we are for our bodies. And can you see how this totally changes the conversation away from being negative and hateful about your body and looking at your body? Like I have this one fact here. It says, 
what if you just told God how thankful you, you are for your body, like your heart that pumps a hundred thousand times a day without you ever having to think about it and give God the glory for your health and honor him with it. It's such a different mindset and it's one that works sisters. Okay. Romans 12, one tells us, I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present your body bodies, a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Some translations say true and proper worship. And I love that because our bodies are the temple of the Holy spirit and they are, we, sh we need to steward them for God. That is going to make such a difference in our health instead of just trying to create body part goals and all of that. And I'm not saying that we can't have goals. I think we have to have goals, but let's move them away from just be strictly vain or aesthetic goals. Like I understand we all want to lose weight and have, you know, maybe you want to like have that tiny little waist or whatever it is. I, I get that. And, and I know God knows your heart in it, but that is just a side effect of living out this godly life and stewarding your body. Well, it's like, we're chasing the results when we need to be following Jesus. Ooh, that was good. Somebody give me a thumbs up for that one. That was good. Okay. We're chasing results. We need to be following Jesus. He'll give us everything and more than we could ever even imagine more than we could ask, think, or imagine open up your Bible and read Ephesians three 20. He has so much for you, but we are chasing worldly ideals instead of godly design girl, I'm on a roll now. Okay. All right. Another scripture, first Corinthians six, 19 through 20 tells us, or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, you are not your own for you were bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's girl, you were bought with price. Jesus died for you. And for me and for all the stupid sins we're ever going to create, we've ever committed and ever will commit. And I just feel like so many people need to hear that, that like one thing that keeps us from taking care of ourselves is that we we're mad at ourselves. We feel guilt. We feel shame. Let's just get right before Jesus, whatever you're carrying right now that you haven't asked him to, if there's anything, I just feel like the Holy spirit is telling me to say this. If there's anything that you want to get right with God right now, just do it take it right to the cross and say, thank you for dying for me. So I can live free from this because God did not die so that you could feel guilty about things. He died for you. So you could be free. Read Galatians five, one, it will set you free. Okay. 11 pray for God to replace the temptations that cause you to be unhealthy with healthy alternatives. He made God made goodness. Okay. Fruit is God's candy girls. We need to retrain our taste buds. Okay. We are craving man-made garbage that our bodies don't know how to process and they're hiding in our fat cells, causing disease, making us store weight that we don't want to carry. It's just not good. It's causing inflammation. You know, a lot of people ask me about sugar and some people will say, well, sugar isn't processed. Well, pretty much all sugar is processed. And I try to explain to them that when you eat God made sugar, you know, like an apple or some berries, something like that, that has some, sh uh, God made sugar in it. You're, you're not going to want to eat, uh, 15 apples, but I will see people eat 15 pieces of candy. You know what I mean? Like we need to think about it. Like did look at your food. Did God make it? And those things that tempt you, you know, there's a scripture that says everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. Think about that think about that. Like help ask God, is this something I need to lay down? And he's going to show you, he's going to show you, like, he'll convict you. Like, this is not, this doesn't have a place in your life anymore. And you'll know. Okay. Um, but ask God to help you replace the foods and drinks that are unhealthy with healthy choices, trade in that candy bar for dark chocolate and berries or the chips for crunchy nut butter and apple slices I, I actually had before, um, I worked out today because I was hungry. I had just one, you know, the really thin rice cakes, they have like the thick ones. I like the really thin ones. And I just had like a smear of natural nut butter on it. And girls, it got me through my workout. I think sometimes we need to like, I could have had a protein bar. I didn't want to have that because I knew right after I worked out, I was going to have, you know, my 
protein and my greens and my good fats. I had the salad with a little bit of a, a grain, a healthy grain in there. And it really makes all the difference for me to look at my food and go, how many of your ingredients are in this brown rice, nut butter? I'm in like, we don't need to have a, anytime you see all those ingredients, you know, it's man-made. So look at this as a rule of thumb. If you can't pronounce it, don't be eating it. Okay. If it looks more like chemicals and medicine, let's train ourselves. Okay. Toward godliness. It also helps take time to take, um, it's also helpful to take note of the times you have cravings and begin to preemptively beat them. Okay. So like, I'm always hungry at four o'clock. Like my body's like, okay, where's my food? So at three 30, I always have a snack. So try to start doing that. So you don't end up like, what if four gets pushed to five and you haven't eaten. And then you're just like, oh my gosh. And you, we, we make bad decisions, right? We're like, I'm so hungry. I just want to eat whatever you can get your hands on. Right. And then you overeat usually because your body is starving. So let's just try to have healthy habits and ask God to help replace those things that are derailing our fitness goals. Because I'm telling you right now, I wrote it in my book, Fit God's Way. If you don't have a copy, get one. It's such a great book. There are times and triggers that are really hurting our fitness. So look for those times in your day and those temptations and let's deal with them. Because if you just got rid of them, I guarantee you in six months, you would probably be at your goal. Like. It's those things, those little decisions that are just, they could be, especially if you're not far from your goal that are derailing your progress. Okay. So let's look at first Corinthians 10, 13, no temptation is overtaking you except such as common to man, but God is faithful. He's faithful girls who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Jesus was a man. He's fully God, but he was, he lived as a man. He understands what we go through and he is, he is with us and we have the Holy spirit to comfort us. Okay. We're not alone. All right. First Corinthians 15, 17 tells us, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord, Jesus Christ. What do you need to have victory over right now? Take Jesus there. He's your, you have victory in him. Walk in it, own it. Okay. And your power, like we just, I just feel like as Christian women, we just are not walking in our power and authority sometimes. And God wants us to desperately. Okay. 12, pray that God uses you to inspire health and wholeness in your family. What if you're the person in your family that helps everyone else get healthy and helps beat those generational diseases? Let's take down the heart disease in our family. Let's end it in our generation. Let's say no more. Let's eat better. I mean, obviously there's genetic components to it, but my doctor has told me a million times that, you know, it's, he told, he explained it to me like this. It's like you, the disease was like a gun. Cause my dad had heart disease. And I don't know if you guys know his story, but he had a stroke. My poor dad, um, he had a quadruple bypass. My little brother, Billy had to give him a kidney. Uh, he had a heart attack then and then he died of a massive heart attack. Like you can't even write this stuff. It was so bad. Right. So I just want you to think about, you know, it's worth it to fight for your health and fight for your family's health. It's worth it. Okay. So when you and your loved ones, you know, get together, pray before you eat, even if it's with a friend, uh, maybe you're not married and you don't have kids, but you have like roommates or you go out to eat with your girlfriends pray. My girlfriends and I hold hands and pray at the table. Okay. Pray before you eat. It just makes all the difference. And there's something about inviting God to the table that just fills you in a way that no food ever could. All right. Um, also write down scriptures to take to your workouts and that's going to inspire people. It's going to inspire you to learn the word of God. And then you're going to be able to share that with other people. Okay. So this is what I want you to do is think about it like this in the challenge. It's written like this. When your loved ones see you praying before you eat and eating God made foods and writing down scriptures and taking them to your workouts, you will be inspiring them to know Jesus and their fitness. Listen, our children are watching everything we do more than they're ever going to listen to what we say. So let's train them in the way they should go. Right? Like the scripture says, train a child in the way he should go. And when he's old, he'll, he will not depart from it. Proverbs 22, six, Matthew five sixteen. 
I love this scripture. Okay. And just so you know, surprise every Thursday, I don't know if I'm going to do every Thursday, but this Thursday and a lot of Thursdays, because I, a girl only has so much time. I just feel like I want to give you like a quick boost of encouragement. Okay. Some podcasts are long. I'm doing what I call the Jesus glow series. So look for it on Thursdays, girl, because it is going to help you keep your get up and glow in Jesus for the whole week long. Okay. And that is why the scripture, like I saw the scripture and I was like, mm -hmm, it's based on this. It isn't our makeup that makes us glow. I mean, it doesn't hurt water workouts, Jesus, it all helps, but Jesus is at the root of it. Listen to this. Let your light shine. Okay. So before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven. We are soldiers. We are soldiers for Jesus. My mom calls my mom and I always joke. We're like, go, uh, go on Christian soldierette. Okay. We're supposed to be living disciplined lives. We are just uh, we're disciples. So we need to live like soldiers. You know, we've got to be fighting for our families, fighting for our health through the word of God, fighting for the people we love to know Jesus. We are not on a battleship or on a cruise ship, right? We're on a battleship. I love that phrase because it shows that like, this is, this Christian life is not easy. And so for us to think that it is, is just, it's not easy. Okay. When you love Jesus, you're going to need to put on the full armor of God. And it's so funny because this morning I shared a script or a quote on Facebook that I've saw going around. And it says like, sister, when you get on the scale, don't be hard on yourself because that full armor of God is heavy. Okay. It's heavy stuff. So, all right. So let's just think about that. Okay. Let's let our light shine. And just like little kids, you know, when you, when they smile and they have that glow, let's get that glow back. Okay. That Jesus glow. All right. That's why I'm creating that. Okay. And then also if you download the 21 day fitness challenge, you are going to get one of my favorite recipes. They it's chicken burrito bowls. And I'm not going to tell you all about it right now. Just head to kimdolanletto.com forward slash 21 day challenge, and you can get it. Okay. 13 pray for God to break the bondage numbers have over you. Okay. Whether that number is on the scale, your clothes, the candles on your cake, you guys in December, if you're listening in real time, it's November in like two weeks, I'm going to be 55. Okay. I keep looking at myself wearing red and, um, I got to tell you, it just keeps reminding me of my dad. My dad looked so good in red. Now I'm not saying I look so good in red, but I was, I actually wore red today. Cause I was like, it's beginning to look a little bit like Christmas around my house. And I love Christmas so much. And I was just thinking about my dad today and I put on this red and I'm looking at my reflection as I speak. And I'm just like, dad, man, I wish he was alive. And I don't know if you guys know this, but the reason I created all this stuff is because of his health issues. Like God uses everything. He used my family's pain to build this whole faith and fitness platform. And uh, I just can't wait for us all to be together in heaven again. And that just gives me so much peace. Okay. So let's go back to this. All right. So whatever that number is, all right, whether it's your age, your clothing size, your weight, whatever your zip code, the money you make, the devil's going to use it to make you feel less than and keep you down. Okay. But you need to remember, do not let it make an idol. Do not let it become an idol because your weight and clothing size is not your report card. Numbers are not your report card. Okay. They are not, you are a child of God and Jesus died for you. So you could live free. Tell God you don't want it to have power over you anymore. And anytime the numbers try to enslave you, take your power back in Christ. Look for it. Don't take the bait in your thinking. Like when I go to the doctor's office and they weigh my, they weigh me. I'm just like, whatever, I don't even care. Cause I know what it says in the morning when I weigh myself and those scales are always, I feel like they're always wrong. It's like the mirrors and clothing stores. I'm like, do you guys even want to sell clothes? Am I right? I'm right. Right. Okay. So let's look at this. Galatians 5, 1 tells us stand fast, therefore in the liberty by which Christ has made us free and do not be entangled again with a yoke of bondage. Galatians 5, 1. I mean, that is a good scripture. What are you in bondage to right now? Is it a number? Is it a food? What is it? Let's get rid of it. Okay. All right. Uh, first Corinthians 6, 12 tells us all things are lawful for me, but not all things are permissible, helpful. 
this is, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm quoting the wrong verse, not the wrong verse, the wrong translation. I am reading the new King James version here, but I'm actually saying the ESV. So let me tell you the new King James version, right? All things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be enslaved by anything. How powerful is that? We're not to be enslaved by anything. So let's, whatever you feel enslaved to take that to Jesus. Okay. It, it won't stand a chance. All right. 14, pray for God to help you establish a healthy sleep schedule. In our world, sleep is, sleep is neglected, but proper sleep is crucial to your overall health. Okay. I mean, we're talking about maintaining an adequate weight, uh, your heart health, everything in your body, even if you're trying to gain muscle, lose weight, um, if you're trying to build a business, if you're trying to be a good mom, a good wife, a good Christian soldierette, you need energy and you won't have it without sleep. Okay. So diseases I, I have in here that, uh, some common diseases because of a lack of sleep, it, it can increase your chances of getting things like heart disease and stroke to obesity and dementia. So pray for God to help you establish a sleep wake cycle that helps you thrive in your daily life. I talk a lot about this again in my book, fit God's way, because sleep is imperative to our health. All right. Proverbs three twenty four tells us when you lie down, you will not be afraid. Yes. You will lie down and your sleep will be sweet. I tell myself that a lot when I wake up in the middle of the night and I'm like, Lord, you said my sleep will be sleep will be sweet. And then I just start praying for like every single person in my family. And I feel bad because I need to like reverse the order. Cause I think sometimes I get, I forget some people. So, cause I like drift off, but that always puts me back to sleep. Just a little sleep trick. Okay. Matthew 11, 28 through 30 tells us come to me. Oh my goodness. I know a mama needs to hear this. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Thank you, Jesus, that you love us so much that we can just go to you with anything, and he lightens the load right away, okay? Here's a, a fact the Mayo Clinic recommends adults get a minimum of seven hours of sleep. Are you getting seven hours of sleep, sister, uh, a night? Are you? Okay. All right. 15, pray for God to make your fitness goals more about serving him and less about what you look like. Um, that one, when I, I think I shared this recently, when I wrote that quote, I just felt gutted. I was like, Lord, forgive me. You know, that is such a good gut check. We are to steward our bodies, not worship them. So making, making that switch from fitness, being like all about what we look like to stewardship from a frustrating flesh project to making it a spirit led lifestyle. That is the turning point of greatness sister. Okay. Woo. That's a, it's a hard one because the truth is, is, is that God has placed gifts in you and a calling and you're not going to be your best you until you have your best health. So steward your body well, steward your health well, so you can live out every good thing he has called for you, right? Think about this. Where, um, where have you feel, felt called? Like, is it to go on a mission trip, volunteer for a charity, start a business God has put on your heart? Sister, you are going to need your health for it, okay? So let's listen to what God says. Matthew 28, 16 through 20 tells us, and Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the father and the son and the Holy spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Isn't it amazing to think one day we're going to be with Jesus right now. Let's take everyone we can with us. Okay. People can gloss over this and think that's not about me. No, we are called. That's what I'm saying steward your health and your body. Well, steward your gifts. Well, live out that calling that God has placed in you because he has called you to the mission field to help him like through you, he can help other people know him. Isn't that amazing? I think one of the most beautiful things that has happened to me is when I speak publicly and women will hug me and they're like, thank you. Like, I'm not going to get choked up, but like, I felt myself starting to get choked up, but they'll say things like I became a Christian because I listened to the strong, confident, his podcast girl, I need a sip of water. Woo. I mean, that is something. 
And you have the power to do the very same thing in your sphere of influence. So that is why Jesus has said, we need to go and make disciples of all nations, but you're not going to do that when you're feeling too insecure to even sing in the church choir or volunteer in the nursery. Ladies, we need to stop all that craziness. Okay. God did not call us to that. All right. Ephesians 3, 20 through 21 tells us now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us to him, be the glory in the church by Jesus Christ for all generations forever and ever. It is God. It is the power of God in you that accomplishes more than you could ever ask, think, or imagine when you're on your own. Like, come on, we'll, we all know willpower doesn't last. Our power is weak, right? We always choose the path of, la of least resistance, but in God, we can do things that we never thought we could do, okay? So I wanna just ask you this, where has God called you? What dream has he given you? How would being fit help you serve better? And let those answers fuel your motivation, okay? Before I go to prayer, I just want to say that it is not too late to join the 21-Day Fitness Bible Study Challenge. Girl, join us now, okay? All you've got to do is go to kimdolanleto.com forward slash 21-Day Challenge. That's it. And you can jump in. This video is recapping week two. There's a week uh, video that, go, that was right before this that recaps week one. And next week I will release a video that recaps week three. You can watch it on YouTube or you can listen to it on your favorite podcast platform. Okay. I am going to pray. Father God, thank you so much for my sisters, Lord. I just want you to come into the space right now. God, I, I feel the burden on these women's hearts that they are carrying this, this weight, weights of shame, weights of regret, weights of it's too late, weights of of I'm too old weights of I'm injured. You know, I'm broken in my spirit. I was abused as a child. I was molested as a child. Like there is a weight on every woman's heart today, God. And I just pray that this episode lifts that burden. Okay. That, that women walk with you, that they, they take your hand that is reaching out for them right now. And they roll their shoulders back and lift their heads up and just say, yes, Jesus, I am saying yes to you. I want to walk this out with you. Ooh, I don't want to get upset. This needs to make me so emotional, Lord. I just felt someone get free. Ladies, let's get free in Jesus, okay? Father God, please help these women though, Lord. Please help them know you, know that you're right there and that wherever they're struggling, that you have the answer and that you love them and that you care and that you can set them free. Father God, I'm so grateful for the Strong Confident His podcast. I'm so grateful that you helped me to just step out and do something I never thought I could do. And I love you and I praise you. And I celebrate women getting free. I celebrate their success. I celebrate them knowing you and walking with you. And God, we just, we just praise you for who you are and how you love us. And we just want to seek your face and not just your hand. And thank you, God. Thank you, God, for this moment. I really feel that chains were broken in Jesus name. Amen. Woo -wee. That made me get teary eyed because as I was talking, it's like, I could just feel people lift their shoulders back and lift their head up and be like, wow, the devil has had me so stuck looking at this, like 1% of my life that I want to change. And God just wants me to see the whole 99% that he has made so awesome. So sisters, I just want to ask you right now, hit share on this episode. If you know someone who needed to hear it, please just, just send it to her right now. Okay. We're so busy. So act now, make sure you subscribe to the, the strong, confident, his podcast, please rate and review it. It means so much to me. And don't forget to subscribe if you're watching on YouTube and drop me a comment. I love you guys. I'm so excited to do life with you. And don't forget to look for the Jesus Glow series. I think I'm going to be sharing all the little glowy things on there, glowing from the inside out, little makeup chicks, hair things, all the things, you know, because you know what? Doing life with you is awesome. So much love to you, sister. <laughs>